Hello, welcome back for another lecture. I hope you all well. I'm gonna continue with this load and, and uh, load path. Uh, we talked about uh, dead load and temperature area in a previous uh, video. If you haven't, you should watch them. And now we're gonna continue with life load. Uh, and uh, if you look at the load type, uh, we had the horizontal uh, load and uh, vertical load. And on the vertical load side, uh, we had the dead load and life load and of course life load uh, turned into a uh, um, roof life load and uh, floor life load which we will kind of explore in a minute <clears throat> normally in general loads are uh, moving load in nature and they vary in a magnitude over the life uh, of the structure and sometimes it's like uh, 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 you have the uh, normal uh, day-to-day -day, uh, use of the facility whether it's an apartment hospital or, or office building and everything is uh, the same thing as every day and then you have a other variety of uh, uh, days uh, uh, variable loads that happen in a life of structure like you have uh, events like a party or, or something might be happening then it doesn't happen on a normal basis so one of the things we're going to look at here look you can look at the uh, a definition of the uh, uh, life load based on IBC and uh, and the uh, uh, ACE, which basically says uh, it's uh, a load that is not dead load and is not including uh, wind load, snow load, rain, rain load, and other load. It's a movable load in a, in a building. And I want to go just walk through the uh, um, IBC with you and in uh, chapter 4 ACE. It's a good reading there if you want to learn about life load. And when you are a designer, you're designing something, you really should know all those code by heart. But let's go talk about a little bit of them here. With some, you have something we call partition. And if you have a life load is um, less than 80 pounds, they allow additional 15 pounds uh, got to be added to the life load. We'll use that in our example coming up. And, um, and you look at here, this table, we've got table 1607. And this is goes for has the list is pretty long. It talks about minimum uniform distributed life load and uh, also concentrated life load uh, based on uh, occupancy, as you see here. And the next one you can see them. Uh, you have something like minimum load for even helicopter pad on top of the roof, and whether it has a weight three thousand pound or more than three thousand pound, you can design it based on this load right here. Uh, continue with that, you can see. Um, like a stairway railway and those even you have to design life load for those it could be a, a, a single concentrator of 200 pound at any angle or it could be a 50 pound per linear for the at any direction and or it could be a, a load of 50 pound distributed normal to a 12 inch by 12 inch area and even in inside the shower where you have these uh, uh, grab bars. Uh, you got you got to watch out for a 250 pound at any angle of uh, uh, concentrated applied load. And uh, even for a vehicle uh, barrier, we have uh, uh, anything over 6,000 pounds. You got to count in for that. Now I don't want you uh, look at this. I said this is not for like roadway barrier or or uh, or, or that's an ash toe. That's a different totally thing. You have to look at the FHWA spec. And we did that in the highway class and also in a bridge design. So this is a list stay with, with the building for now. Then we continue with the look at the reduction in uniform life load. And this formula is pretty, you can see it says start out with the initial life load, which we confirm the table. And then there's something called KLL and K is a life load element factor is basically influence area divided by tributary area. What is influence area? Let's look at this right here. The influence area, if you remember, we talked about tributary area last uh, two, two uh, uh, video ago. This yellow area is the uh, tributary area for a beam A. Beam A is located between point one and two. And we know is that the tributary area for is halfway between this beam and the next beam. So that's what this yellow area is. However, this beam, the influence area for this beam, it could be all the way to the other beam, which is a bigger area. Same thing for column. We talked about tributary area being halfway between column and the next column. 
but the influence area it can go all the way to the other side so we use this like, uh, factor uh, to design a reduced life load um, and that's what the formula is and one of the, the limitation has to be for example I think it has to be uh, less than 100 pound per square foot and uh, L shall not be less than 0.5 L0 for members supporting one floor and if it's a multi-floor it has to be 0.4 not less than 0.4 L0 and there's a table on here that shows you the KLL you can basically use those rather than go ahead and figure out your influence area uh, um, then we have the uh, roof life load and there's the formula for right here and that is based on uh, this uh, tributary area and the pitch of the roof so if the pitch of the roof is steeper than four inch per foot that's what f is if it's more, more than four inch per foot uh, then you will have uh, uh, these uh, this condition what, what is going to be your uh, roof uh, r1 and r2 uh, factor to calculate the, the uh, life load. We do example uh, go over this again. Um, what's next? Um, you can read the spec and there's a lot of good stuff in there you can't go wrong. However, um, um, let's go over an example to explain this. Take a look at this example on the board right here. We have this example and the floor is a 10-story building and the pitch of the building which I didn't draw here but it, I'm telling you right now is half inch per uh, foot and uh, they want to know what is the uh, life reduced life load or life load on a column A3 and column A6 we're just going to do column A3 and uh, looking at it because the roof is uh, flat we're going to use 20 pound per square foot according to IBCV table 1607 take a look at it and then the eighth floor it says is a storage floor and has a, a design criteria of 120 pound per square foot and your typical floor is 50 pound per square foot and let's go to work and uh, solve this problem I did put this in a, a spread Excel uh, sheet and so go ahead and make an Excel sheet because it's a 10 floor is a lot of number you got to crunch and uh, um, let's start out with floor number 10 which is the roof okay floor number 10 I'm going to start on this end one of the first thing we look at the formula we had LR and that's equal L0 uh, time R1 and time R2 and our L0 is 20 pound for roof okay 20 pound square foot keep that in mind so my LR is going to be 20 time R1 R2 so let's find out what R1, R2 is, and is that, that was based on turbotary area, based on the pitch of the roof. Let's find the turbotary area. Uh, turbotary area for that column, column, uh, what was the column? Column 3, A3. For column A3, okay, that is equal. So we got to go halfway between that column and the one over. So that's a 28 divided by 2. 28 divided by 2 and one side is 20 and the other side is 25 so 20 plus 25 divided by 2 and that should give me uh, 315 square foot okay now we found that so based on that we're going to look at that equation then our r1 is going to come out to 1.2 minus 0.0001 time at and that comes out to 1.2 minus 0 0.001 time uh, 315 so I get 0.89 so that's R1 and R2 D2 that's pretty good huh R2 is uh, the pitch of the roof is half inch, no, one half inch per foot, which is less than four. And based on that, so my R2 comes out to equal one. And therefore, my LR in here, let me go on this side. My roof life load comes out to uh, 20 times 0.89 time one and that is uh, 
17.8 pounds per square foot. Um, so now I have that, but that's not my answer. Remember we talked about it. We said if you have a column, the load on column is given in kips. The load on beam is given in kips per foot. The load on uh, floor is given kip per square foot. So this is a column. We got to make this to a, uh, a kip. So it's going to become, this is the ninth floor, by the way. No, 10th floor. 10th floor on a roof. So it's going to become 17.8 uh, multiplied by the turbotary area, 315. And that comes out to divided by 1,000. Let's make it to a kip. Uh, okay, so I get um, 5.6 kips. Okay, take a look at my spreadsheet. So that's where that's the top row column. So the column is supporting the life, life row there. Let's go ahead and continue. I want to do a couple more of these. The next one is the ninth floor. Let's do the ninth floor. And, uh, okay, uh, what was it? Uh, okay, so we're gonna go ahead, we're not in a roof, we're on a typical floor, and uh, our life load was, looking at the table, uh, per the table, L came out to, for typical floor, L is equal to 50, pound per square foot right and now we have that and let's find our uh, KLL for that one column in that corner KLL it's given uh, if you read it it says uh, uh, exterior column without a uh, um, cantilever of uh, the slide being cantilever so KLL is equal four and uh, all the information we have is there, so let's go ahead and the equation was uh, L is equal uh, L0 time 0.25 plus 15 divided by square root of KLL time AT. So that will give me basically, uh, and this has to come out bigger than 0.5 L, otherwise no good. Remember the code says that, so if it's different ways it comes out to. So if you do that, that's going to be 50 multiplied by uh, 0.25 uh, times 15 divided by uh, square root of uh, 4 times 315. And you can see in my spreadsheet, I have like 50 here, and then I have uh, 0.67. That's where the factor is. And then that comes out to uh, 33.5 pound per square foot. Now we have that again. Now, here is the trick. You want to convert this to a kips. Remember the spec. You got to follow the spec. The spec says if you have a 50 because you're less than 100, less than 80, so you got to add additional 15 pound for partition load. Therefore, our axial load for that column due to a life load comes out to, okay, that's your load for column, uh, where's the column? A3 comes out to 33.5 uh, pound per square foot plus another 15 pound per square foot for partition load. Then you multiply by the turbotary area 315. So now you have 15.3 uh, kip. Do I have that right? Yeah, check my calculation. So now you have 15.3 kips, and uh, in one here we check, make sure this is bigger than 0.5 LO, which is because 33.5 is bigger than half of that, so we're good for uh, checking by this spec. And uh, we add this to the other floor on the last uh, 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 column of my spreadsheet, you add a f f uh, nine f 10 floor to 9 floor and so on and so forth. So, okay, now we got this 9 floor. Let's do the 8th floor and we'll be done with this and then you can do the rest of them yourself. I'm going to use this middle right here. And here's the interesting thing about 8th floor. 8th floor, and it says the 8th floor, it's the storage. 
and the, uh, the, the design criteria was 125 pounds. So LL is equal 125 pounds per square foot. Guess what? The spec says, no, no, you cannot reduce anything over 100 pounds. So we're going to stay with that. And therefore, the load, uh, life load for our column for actual load is going to be, uh, uh, it's going to be for uh, A3 is 125 times turbo tree area, 315 divided by 1,000. And that comes out to 39.4 kip. Okay, this is how it's done. And go ahead and fill out my spreadsheet. See if you can get all those numbers I did. It'd be a good practice for you. And if you find something you can, cannot figure the number I got, email me. I will uh, work with you. And uh, here's a point here. You go all the way to the bottom floor. You see the, uh, let me look at my spreadsheet here. You see that uh, the bottom floor is 143.3. That is due to all the load combined from each floor. Only life load. If we have to do this in real life, that's our life load. Now we got to come back, calculate the dead load. All the way from top to the bottom. Add the rain load. Add the snow load. And other load that we uh, come up. It could be earthquake or wind in that area. So when you have all that, you use a load combination to come up with the final load. But that's for the story of the, in the future we're coming up. Uh, this is the first time I'm saying this in all my video. I probably made over 100 video. If you really like my video, subscribe to my channel. And thank you. Be well and stay fit.